Hello internet, it's Nixie here. Welcome back to my channel. I keep recording videos and then not doing anything with them, so I apologize. Um, there's another video that I've been meaning to do that I haven't done, which is more of a talk one. Um, a friend asked me about how asexuality affects dating for me, and I do plan on talking about that, but that's not for this video. Um, I just finished up a appointment with a counselor and then my doctor and now that I have had my diagnosis of borderline personality disorder along with of course uh, the depression and the general anxiety disorder and my obsessive compulsive disorder now things are actually able to slowly start moving forwards in the realm of healing. I've been medicated now for a few months and only just is it starting to have any sort of tangible or noticeable effect in that my obsessive compulsive disorder is more manageable. That's the only really big difference that I've noticed. I'm not necessarily super motivated or energetic. I'm not sleeping better. I'm not eating better. Like none, none of that. It's simply I am more able to function like a normal human being without washing my hands 70 times in a day. It's only more like, you know, 40. Like I'm still washing my hands more than the average person, but it's not as bad and I'm able to pick something off the floor and use it rather than pick it up, wash it, then use it, then drop it and pick it up and wash it again. Um, so it's just streamlining my life a little bit. Um, and over the last week I've, I've done a little bit of creative projects. I've got some deadlines that I'm working towards. So there's a, a little bit, a little bit of improvement, which is nice. It's nice to have something at least because there hasn't been for a long time and it gets really discouraging. But one of the things that I was talking to with the counselor today um, is that I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful because I have such an incredible network of people that are there to support me, that care about me, that are always there with like kind words and encouragement. And I know that a lot of people don't have that. And I'm so incredibly grateful to have that. But at the same time, um, a lot of people don't know how to be supportive. <laughs> um, a lot of people want to say, like, everybody wants to help. And I, and I know this. Every, and I don't think that there's any mentally ill or neurodivergent person that will ever not know that everyone is just trying to help. But I have so many friends that say things like, oh, you just need to go for a walk or you need to eat organic or you just need to do yoga every day. Uh, you need to do mindfulness meditations. Bitch, I've done all of this. <laughs> this is the thing. Is I've tried all of it. <laughs> um, and yeah, some of it has helped. Definitely. But none of it has had a lasting effect. Um, nothing has helped in such a way that it has really felt like something absolutely necessary in order to function or to be better. The thing is, is that I think a lot of people, um, you know, have a, a depressive time, you know, an episode, you know, things get shitty or maybe things didn't get shitty and you just got depressed for no reason and you started walking every day or you started, started eating organic and your life turned around and you're back on track. And that's great. And if that works for you, I'm so happy that that worked for you. But when it comes to chronic illness and mental illness and personality disorders, going for a fucking walk doesn't fix that shit. Sorry, that's not how it works. It's just not. And as helpful as it might seem to be like, go for a walk. It's not. Because then when I don't do it, I just feel even more shitty. Or if I do it, uh, 
And it's like, oh, look, trees. I still want to die. It, it just makes you feel more broken sometimes. Or like going for a walk and even you feel better and you get home and you're like, wow. I don't know how I am supposed to exist like this. Like, it's just not a good feeling. Um, so I wanted to point that out because I, I think that a lot of people don't realize that. If you're neurotypical and something helps you, that's awesome. But that doesn't make it a fix-all or the thing that's gonna help. Um, because chances are, like, I don't know, if, if people are like me, they've tried these things. Because being sick isn't fun. It's not... I mean, the idea of getting better is terrifying, but it's also, it's not fun to be sick. It's not fun to wake up with anxiety attacks and to want to die all the time and to have uncontrollable emotional reactions to things, even though the, the cognitive part of my brain is aware that it's completely, like, I don't even know the words that I'm looking for right now. It's just like so much, it's just so extra. I'm so extra and I know it. <laughs> um, so I wanted to bring that up to people. Um, and the other thing that I get a lot is, oh, you know, don't, don't label yourself. Don't become your illness. Um, you're more than your illness and, and don't let that become your identity and all that kind of crap. But you know what? I have lived 24 years. I'm 25 now, but I lived 24 years of my life living with these disorders and not having labels for them. Okay? Like depression, yeah. I've I've always kind of known that was a thing. Anxiety, I've always known that was a thing. OCD, I've kind of always knew that was a thing. But borderline is so new to me. It's only within like the last year that I've discovered this what it is and what it means and it's it's honestly life-changing like fuck this I'm gonna talk about my disorder I'm gonna accept it and embrace that aspect of myself because if I don't how am I gonna learn from it right it's by discovering this and acknowledging it and pursuing the information about it I have learned so much about myself in my present form as well as as a teenager as even a child and to look at those experiences through the lens of my personality disorder that is highly stigmatized I have so much compassion for my younger selves because she had no fucking clue what was going on she just knew that something wasn't right and everything was too much and she just she survived and like now I'm 25 and it's so hard still and I have all these tools in my toolbox that I never had and it's still so hard. So yeah, I'm going to talk about my illness. I'm going to be out there. I'm going to advocate because people don't know shit about borderline and I know I'm not alone and it's, it's changing my life and it's really hard and it's really scary to face these things and to acknowledge them and learn about them. But I have more compassion for myself than I probably ever had, even if at the same time I I feel worse than I've ever felt. So yeah, I'm gonna be my illness for a while and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm I'm learning to accept it as a part of myself and I have no regrets or apologies for that. Um, and I think that that can that can be said for a lot of people. I mean, not everyone. Some people maybe, oh, I just so happen to be this and, and that's that. And that's fine. If that works for you, if if that's what keeps you going, I'm glad. But for me, I need to advocate for myself and for others like me that, that don't know. Because if I don't, who's going to, right? Borderline has this stigma. Oh, don't don't date a chick with borderline. She's crazy. She's manipulative. She's all, all these things. And you know what? Yeah, I've been all of these things. 
was talking, I was talking to this counselor this morning and it was so validating to be like, you know, you don't suck. And I remember talking to counselors when I was a teenager that I would just talk in circles because I was smart and I was manipulative. And now that I look at that, it is so fucking borderline of me. And she's like, yeah, yeah, because yeah, you're smart. <laughs> like, I can see how you would do that. And I did that. But I've grown. And I've even before I knew what borderline was, I was actively working on those traits that I don't like about myself that come with that disorder. And now that I have that knowledge of what it is, there's so much more at my disposal in order to cope with that. So yeah, that's just, that's a little bit of my thoughts on where I'm at right now and with mental health and all that. If you want to support someone that you care about who is struggling with mental illness, don't say things like, just go for a walk. Switch the perspective and say, hey, let's go for a walk. Let me spend time with you. How can I help you? Don't just spew off things that have helped you because that's not necessarily what's going to help. Ask them, what can I do to help you? How can I help you? What can I do to support you? Because that's going to go so much farther than just, this worked for me, it'll work for you. Um, yeah, that's, that's my rant for the day. And thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I will do my best to post more. I'm feeling slightly, ever so slightly more energetic and productive. And hopefully it will get better with referrals to various specialists and physiotherapists and blah, 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 blah. I'm so freaking tired of everything health related. But it's my life because I'm chronically ill. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>